<laughs> okay, so we're starting off with the change of position exercises. The three main exercises is sit down and stand. And so we want our dogs to be able to go into each position from the other positions. So to be able to go from a sit to a down, a stand to a down, and so forth. Okay. If you are adding the commands, I want you to add the commands. If Not you're yet. still unable to get him to perfectly go into each position, then you still want to just work on the physical cue. Okay. So are you adding the commands yet? Not yet. Not yet, so you're just doing the luring? Yes. Okay, remember during this step, if you're just doing the luring, what marker do you have to use? Oh, uh, yes. None or the continuation? The verbal, continuation verbal continuation. Okay, so a uh, bunch of different an answers and, and you're all partially right. So you don't have to use a marker if you don't want to, because of course, if I get a treat, if I'm working his puppy here and I want to teach him that I want him to sit when I lift up, the moment his butt hits the ground, I give him the food, he made the connection. Same thing, if I lure him to the down and he lays down and gets a bite, we made the connection. But I do recommend using a marker so you can work on your own timing. So yes, and then reward. Now, it doesn't matter which marker you use, continuation or terminal, do we remember why? Because you didn't give them a command. Exactly, exactly. So there's no stay. If you don't give your dog a command, those of you at home, your dog's not in a stay. So during this portion of the training, if you're just using a physical cue, you can use either marker, okay. the continuation marker or the terminal marker. So go ahead and start. Yes. Yes. Yes, good boy. And what we can start doing now is separating each one a little bit. Meaning okay, so give once him, he gets him. in the position, Mark, give him the reward and okay. then pull your hand back and then get him to okay. do the next position. I was doing very small bites, that's why. Come on. Yes, good boy. Yes, good dog. Yes. And when we're doing this and we're working on our timing when it comes to rewarding the dog with the marker, it looks like you're doing it right. I couldn't tell, I'm just saying this for everybody. Once the dog gets in a position, even if your hand's right in front of the dog's face, it's still yes, then release. Okay. You still don't, you wanna make sure you don't go yes. And it looks like you're separating and it's hard to tell when you're Come watching on. from a distance. Yes, good And then dog. release, yep, that looked good. Yes, good boy. And he's starting to drop down really fast. So bring him back up into the sit. Oh, and the sit. Yeah, now bring yes. your hand all the way up. All the, up a little more. Not, not just, just bring it natural, natural. And then once you're in front of him, drop down really fast, okay. like make it a race. Okay. Because he's getting to the point where he's gonna just drop into the down position and you're gonna have a really pretty down command. Oh, he was a little slow on that one. That's okay. Yes. Now, if we want our yes. dog to do the behavior very quickly, should we or should we not reward slow performance? Uh, in the beginning, you can oh. just to guide him, but then you want to, to make it only reward for fast action. So you say once he gets good at it, then only reward for fast? Yeah, because yes. you don't want to confuse him that you don't want him to lie down. Yes. In the beginning, they don't really know how to do it. Yeah, in fact, yes. if I'm, I don't even look at the speed, whether or not I'm going to reward. I just look at where I am within the training process, meaning the different stages for when we start to space out the reward. Stage one, continual reinforcement. Free. We're rewarding every single good correct dog. repetition. Stage two, that's when the dog is performing it on the verbal command alone. So like some of the behaviors for you, with your dog. Stage two, when your dog does it, correctly you either mark and reward or you provide verbal praise do that for a few weeks stage three you do one of three things when your dog is correct mark and reward provide verbal praise or you say nothing at all so for me it just depends on what stage not whether or not the dog does it fast or slow because there could be times if your dog might be not super into it and you tell them to go into the down and they go into the down slowly they're like this kind of suck and then you don't reward them they go yep yeah, i was right it sucks right so then if we reward them and we get excited they go oh wait maybe this is more fun so I don't determine it based on that because the dog doesn't see it as that. The dog doesn't go, oh, I did it fast. That's why I got it, but I did it slow because they're looking at the completion. They're looking at, oh, elbows touched. That possibly triggers the mark and reward. Does that make sense? Yes. Does it um, help for doing almost like speed drills with the dog to like uh, almost like a game? Watch that tension. Almost like a game uh, playing with them to kind of go fast in different positions. Does that actually help with his motivation? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Anytime we make the training a game, we make it fun, that's what we should be doing anyways. When you bring your dog out to train, they should be super excited and motivated. Just because we're doing obedience and we want our dog to learn, it shouldn't be this mentality of, what's that old song? School's out. 
forever, right? It's not, we want the dogs to want school forever. We don't want them to want it to go away because we want to make it fun. So anytime we can incorporate games, we can make it fun, we can add play. I always race my dogs. I think we talked about that before. One of the things I like doing with the climb command, once a dog starts to get good at it, I will race the dog to the climb. So wherever I am, I'll tell the dog climb and then I race them to it. And then after enough of those, when you say climb, your dog goes, I'm gonna beat you to the climb and they take off. That's how we increase speed because what is speed based on? Motivation. Motivation. The more motivated the dog is, the faster they're going to move. And that's good or bad things. But for us as trainers, we want it to always be good, right? Because you think of a dog's running away from a predator more dangerous than he or she is, they're going to run very fast. They're not going to take their time. And if your dog is chasing a toy, they're going to run fast to get the toy. Motivation increases speed. And of course, we want to lean on the positive side. Yes, good boy. Good, and the more he starts to understand that race. Now, of course, in the beginning, we start slow because we're teaching the dog, but once they know when we move down, we want them to lay down, we should start getting fat. So right there, yes. why'd you go back up after you already went down? Because he didn't actually execute what I wanted. So uh, I, I was you don't resetting, want... resetting pretty much. So you're doing it because you think he does it easier in the sit. Well, right. So if you go down and your dog's butt oh, okay. end stays up and you're like, I, well, now I need to reset to a sit. It. No, you keep it there and let them figure it out. Okay. Right. Got it. If we see an issue, we solve it. We don't avoid it. Got it. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's a common thing people do. They try to go down. The dog doesn't go down. So they're like, all right, back up to the sit, back to up. The dog's still up, back up to the sit. Right. <laughs> Yes. Once a dog realizes, oh, I have to lay down, then you're not going to have that issue. And if we have a dog with lower perseverance, we can give them rewards while they're still down until they lay down. Then we can give them a jackpot. Does uh, that make sense? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I was so used to giving them the down from the sit. That's why I actually Yeah, because you had to be able to do it from each position. Yes. So let me get a treat. And I'm not going to reward him for jumping up. That's using that negative punishment. So I'm going to get him to stand. So there's the stand. And then if I go down, oh, now he's doing it, of course. Again, there's the stand. So if I see that, I just wait, see how it goes down? Yes. And then once he realizes, oh, that back end has to go down as well, you won't have that issue. But if you always reset, then you won't be able to fix it. Got it. Yes. Very nice. Timing looks good. Yes. Good dog. Okay, I'll do it. Yes, good boy, good dog. Good boy. And a couple more, and that would be a good little short session for him. Yes. Good boy. Yeah, because one of the exercises I want you guys to do is you get however yes. distance away from your dog and you're able to tell your dog to go in each position from the other position. Yes. So we start up close. Free. Good boy. Good Very dog. Nice. Good Excellent. boy. Any Good questions? Dog. Not at this time, though. All right. Who's next? You can also, like, when we teach the terminal marker during the engagement training, we say the marker and then we move back to encourage the dog to come and get the reward. Oh, a lot okay. of people think that when you mark with the terminal marker, you always have to do that, but you don't. Oh, okay, okay. Once they're conditioned and they know the terminal marker means release plus reward, then oh. you could have him sit. The moment he sits, you can use your terminal marker and hand it to him. As long as he knows that it means release plus reward, then it's fine for him to get up, but you don't have okay. to make him jump up to get it. You can if you want, right. but you don't have to. Okay. So if you're not ready to do stays in each one of these positions, positions, yeah. I would use the terminal marker and just hand them the treat okay. and then go into the next one. I've been doing like some, just some luring without, uh, without the command. Mm. And then I guess I've been doing like just continuation for the, for the sit and the down. With the, just the lure, right? Just, yeah. yeah with the lure. Yeah, Cause at yes. that point it doesn't matter if yeah. they're not in a stay, then mm -hmm. they, they're not having to stay in a stay. Cause our continuation marker just mm -hmm. means a reward. Mm -hmm. That's it. It doesn't change the dog's circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's why if they are in a stay, they have to maintain it. And if they're not in a stay, they remain free from the stay. And the terminal marker is always a release. So if they're not in a stay, they're not being released from anything. So it really mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And if they are in a stay, then they are being released. Got it. So you're, are you using the terminal marker though? Yeah, I think I'm just going to do a couple like continuation, just kind of try to get a little bit of distance, but only with the sit and the down. Okay. And you're right using... Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And you're uh, adding the command, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Whenever you're ready. Yes. Wait. Yes. 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 Sit. Yes. That was nice. So he knows the verbal command. Down. Nice job separating the physical cue from the verbal command. 
and be patient because right now you're in the reinforcement event. So yes. boom, once he lays down, reinforcement event is over. And so now he's in a down stay, right? Good. So if he's in a yes. stay, you have to be ready with your marker that predicts negative reinforcement. Mm. What word are you using for that? Uh, wrong. Wrong? Okay. Now, if he starts to come up when you say yes, don't give him the treat. So he started to come up off his elbows mm -hmm. a little bit. So say yes. Once he looks. <laughs> wrong? Wrong. Good? Good. Wait a few seconds so he's not being rewarded for breaking and going <laughs> back. Yes. Now move slowly towards him. If he gets up, move it wrong. away. Put him back in the down. Slowly move towards him. Yes. There we go. So he figured it out pretty quickly. Sit. And then good, enter the event. Take your time, it's never a rush. Yes. Excellent. People always wanna rush those events, so taking it nice and smooth, that looked really nice. Yes. Yes. And so now you're back to just doing the lure? Yeah, I think just because he's kind of doing like the sideways uh, mm. down. And, and we can fix that using okay. a shaping box. Yeah, I figure right now, I think just if it's from position to position, he kind of stays centered a little more. So maybe just reinforce that a little You can more. do it more quickly and use the terminal marker. Yes. 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 And try to do a, a, a starting, a new starting point. Once your dog's really good at following the lure, we don't want to keep the food in their face the whole time. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to pull back, then go back into it. So there is almost like a reset point. Yes. Oh. Well, that's fine that he got up because you didn't give him There's a command. Nothing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And your physical cue, his response to yes. it is good enough to add the verbal command. So I probably would be adding the verbal command at this point. Okay. Just use the terminal marker if you're not worried about, or if you don't want to worry Sit. about the stay. Down. Now that one you paired. Yes. So now he's in a down stay. Stand. Yes. And now he's in a, st so stand stay Sit. is difficult. So now he broke the stand stay. Yes. Mm, Cause I didn't recommend. And you didn't use the terminal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So again, if you're not ready to have the stay and you don't want to reinforce it, just use the terminal marker. Do the exact same thing you're doing right now, just use okay. the terminal marker. It, it takes away the pressure Down. of us having to reinforce the stay. Free. There you go, much better. Sit. Free. Nice, your timing is really good. Stand. Free. And for those of you watching at home, when I say timing, what I'm referring Sit. to is marking the Free. behavior at the right moment and separating the physical from Down. the verbal. Fr Free. Stand. Free. Ooh. Try not to pair. Yeah. Down. So that one you paired. Just follow through though, you're committed. Down. Free. And then reward, nice. Sit. Free. Stand. Free. Sit, free. That looks really nice. And another thing, if you guys do want to start working something like the stand stay, but you don't want to put a lot of pressure on yourself, making sure it's perfect, what I'll often do is I'll use just the lure. Then once the dog is standing and they're not moving their paws at all, I'll provide verbal praise, feedback, let them know, great job. So let's say the dog is standing, I would do something like this. Very good, nice, good job. If they move, I stop the praise. So now just stopping the praise is the indicator to the dog that something went wrong. But there's no punishment and again it takes away the pressure from us so if you don't mind I'll try to see if I can do it with him and then you can give it a shot so what I would do is I would take the lure I'd make him stand good very nice good good you see how I'm stopping I want to wait till he can hold it for a second and I'm keeping my fist close so I don't want him to get the treat I'm just using that as a cue I'm watching the feet, or the paws rather. Good. Good. Very nice. 
And so he's moving it a lot. So what I'm yes. gonna do is I'm just gonna keep him standing. And then as long as he's not moving his paws, so a lot of little movement, not, oh, still, still too much movement. Another thing you can do, by the way, you can keep one hand right here mm -hmm. and help the dog out. But not giving commands is gonna help us so we're not worried about making the mistakes. Got it. So if he moves, it's no big deal. Right here, buddy. And this is often how I will start teaching a stand stay because we don't want them moving their paws everywhere, especially the back paws. There we go, good. And it's a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He still thinks he has to move a lot. So I'm just trying to get him to maintain the position. Every time he moves, I'm readjusting him. So I'm watching those back legs and then I'm readjusting. Very nice. But again, when we first start teaching a stand stay, just like everything else, it shouldn't be stressful for the dog. I'm just trying to show him what I want in the best way possible with the physical assistance. Once he starts staying in the position, then we can start doing the praise. So it wasn't working and that's why I adjusted to help him out a little bit. But then when they are holding it, we do that praise and the moment they break it, we just stop praising. And then we readjust them again and then we praise them again. You wanna try? Yes. We can also yes. focus on the concept of the reward placement. So if we want to do yes. a stand, we just keep rewarding him when he's in the stand. Yes. And then when he leaves the stand, we put him back in the stand and then we don't re uh, we reward only yes. in the stand position. So like if you move your hand away and he goes to sit, you just put him back in the stand and then yes. reward. Move your hand away if he goes to sit, put him back in the stand and reward when he's standing. Yes. So then that goes back to normal reward placement where the dog goes, well, what's the point of trying to sit back down or move around if I'm going to get the reward yes. in this position? Yes. Yes. That looked nice. Well, that's why we're not doing a command. No, no, but he like makes a mistake, so she puts him back and then kind of rewards yes. after he kind of behaves. Does he want to do the mistake again, like get off the... the no, it, it could, but not if we're rewarding when he is holding it. So if he's yes. holding the position and we're giving him rewards just like doing any stay, then they want to seek out that position. And since we're not using a command, the dog's technically not making any mistakes. So they do figure yes. it out pretty nicely this way. But if we were adding the stay command and then yes. they were breaking, then they could possibly be breaking to get put back into the position. But that's often one of the best things about not using commands. Yes. But yeah, if she only rewarded him when he moved and then was placed back, then he would do that. Yeah. Yes. 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 There we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, he it. <laughs> yes. 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 Very nice. That looked yes. good. There you go. Nice. Yes. That looked really good. So you're able to get multiple rewards in a short period of time without him moving yes. his legs at all. Yes. And yes. you're going to get some of those little micro movements yes. every now and then. Not too big of a deal. But something like the stand stay, yes. I'm not gonna name it until I can get the dog to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. Like I've been working this recently with Charlie and I waited until I could yes. walk around him a couple times without him moving his paws at all before I decided to start putting it on a command. Yes. Good, and you can start doing some of the other uh, positions as well. Yes. Add the command if you want. Down. Ooh. That one you paired, you noticed, yeah. right? Free. Free. Down. Free. Down. And watch, if you keep doing this, when you say free and he stands back up and you do down again, see now he's starting to just stay down there because it's like, oh, the last three times I popped up into a sit, you made me go back into a down, so I'm just going to hang out here. Yeah. Even, free. Even though he was released. Exactly, the reward placement. Down. Free. Down. 
And for those of you watching at home, the Free. separation from the command down and the lure is what gives Sit. the dog the opportunity to figure out the pattern. Remember, Free. they learn very well through pattern recognition and predictability. That's what classical conditioning down. is. Free. Maybe one or two more and that should be good for him. Sit. Free. That was really nice. Down. Free. Sit. Free. Adding the <laughs> command for the stay right now, or the stand, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. for him is fine, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be working on the stay until I can get that Got nicely it. without the command. So you can go stand or post or whatever uh -huh. your command is, get him to stand, use the terminal marker right away and reward him, okay. but I wouldn't try a stand stay with the command until I can get him to do a stand stay without the command. Does that make yes. more sense? Because yes. then if he is breaking without the command, it's not a big deal and it takes the pressure off of us. Makes sense. Okay, yeah. cool. Any questions? Uh, tr not for now. Yeah. Okay. Thank All you. Right, who's next? I'm adding the command, but he does it like. I would again. Um, him sniffing the ground. I would stop allowing that because to him sniffing the ground is better than anything else. And remember, that's what <laughs> reward-based training is based on. It's based on how much the dog wants what we have. If I go, hey, do you want this? And he goes, I'd rather sniff the grass. I can't train with rewards, right? So with him sniffing, I would just always be lifting his head up. I would stop allowing it. I wouldn't correct it, I just wouldn't allow it. Okay. I might be adding them a little too early. As long as you can get him Not to do early, it every, if you can get him to do it every single time with the physical cue and he's performing it the way that you like, then you can add the command. Okay. But if you can't guarantee that you can get him to do it with the physical cue or he's not performing it how you like, then I wouldn't add the command yet. Okay. And for example, your down might be perfect, but you're still working on your stand. You can name the down and then just do the lure for the stand. It's okay. wherever you are in the process. Hello, ready? Down. Okay. Yeah, see down I wouldn't name yeah, it. Yeah, so why, I wanted why'd to you, scoot him more back. Why'd you come back up? Oh, I wanted it. Well, I wanted to scoot him more back so he could have like space to go down. Yeah, no, he can still go down. Once you commit, you want to follow through. You don't want to come okay. back up. That was the same thing I think before you got yes. here that James did once. I think I I do have I do tell him to sit. So down. Yeah. Okay, there we go. He laid down that time. Yeah. And then did you mark? So now he should be in a down stay. So yes. if you're not ready to do the stays, use the terminal marker. What's your terminal marker? Yes. Yes is your terminal? Yes. Is Release it. plus reward? Free. Free. Free is your terminal. Yes. Free. Yes. Okay, so when he gets in the position, use your terminal marker so you're not okay. worried about the stay. Down. Free. Very good, but you notice you paired the down, right? Yes. Okay. See, now him getting up is perfectly okay because he wasn't in a stay because you used the terminal marker. And that one was just a lure. Yes. Down. Free. So that one, it looked like you gave him the reward and then said free. Okay. Once he, once his elbows touch the climb bed, that's when you say free. Down. Down. Free. Then reward. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the marker is what pinpoints the moment in time that he's correct. Down. Free. Good boy. Am I praising? You can praise. Okay. Absolutely. Down. Is it okay that I have my hand up or should I have it? No, it's, it's fine that you have it up right now. Okay. And uh, don't do too long of a pause. The pause should be with under a second. If you start getting into two, three seconds, then the pause is too long. Okay. Down. Then move. Free. That was good. good. So right there, you could go up and do a sit. You know what I mean? Okay. So you can be doing, and I would probably be standing. So you can go down, lure, free, reward. Okay. Sit, lure, free, reward. Okay. Stand, lure, free, reward. Okay. Right? And it's going to make it more fun because that was like so slow you probably end up getting bored. Okay. Down. Lure. Free. Reward, nice. Sit. So that one you paired? Yes. Stand. So that one you paired as well. <laughs> it's hard, the pairing is yeah. difficult. Okay, down. Free. Sit. 
So that one you paired too? <laughs> if it helps, you can do the counting that we talked about the other day. So if it helps, you can go down, two, three, move. Free, reward. Sit, two, three, move. Free, reward. Okay. So sometimes saying it helps us with it. Okay. Down. Or saying in Free. your head works too. Sit. So that one you paired. Yep. Free. Stand. <laughs> I'm parrying, I'm parrying. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those things, like if you always pair, your dog still will eventually learn, but they're gonna learn gonna way faster away. when we separate it. Because again, we wanna look at it as questions and answers. The command is a question. You can't give someone a question and an answer at the exact same time. You ask the question, he doesn't know. You're like, hey, Willow, do you know what down means? And he's like, not quite, no, nope, I don't. And then you show him. And then after enough of those, you go, do you know what down means? He goes, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this. Okay, down. Free. Much better on the timing on that one. Stand. Free. Very good. Timing's getting better. Down. Free. Your, your timing just improved quite a bit. Stand. That one was close to pairing. <laughs> you noticed it too. I saw the adjustment that you made. So you're in the event, so just take your time, make sure he stands. You're still in the event? I wouldn't have given him the treat. So you said stand and he didn't stand. What, is it okay if I like? Well, so what I would have done, if yeah. I was trying to yeah. lure him and he's not quite doing it, I'm still in the middle of the event, you can use your hand, okay. you can do whatever to get him to pop up. Okay. Whoa. But don't give up halfway through an event. Okay. Because if you tell him stand and he doesn't stand and you give up, okay. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> Down. Free. Stand. Free. There you go, much better. Down. Free. I waited too long. Stand. So your pause between the verbal command and the physical cue is almost becoming too much now. It's okay. close, it's like borderline. Try to make it about a half second pause. It's almost at about a second and a half, two seconds right now. Down. There you go. Free. Stand. Free. Down. Free, down, free. Let's just do a couple more and that should be good for him. Stand. You see what I mean? The, the pause free. is almost too long. It's like stand. If it's too long, then it's not gonna work either. Okay. You wanna start your movement within the first second. So one second is roughly one Mississippi. Okay. Now, if you are counting, Free. it changes the time, but you have to verbalize it. Meaning, if you are going down, two, three, move, that could be more than a second, but the dog can connect it because we're talking. They hear the two, three, and they figure it out. That's why it works so well. And I think I told some of you about this before. I started doing that when I was taking off my dog's collar. I would go one, two, three, and I would take it off. One, two, three. Three, after enough of those, what happened when I said one? She pulled her head out. She learned the pattern. One led to two, two led to three, three led to me taking it off. I say one, she goes, I got it. So doing that count really does help if you are having a hard time with your timing. Because the dog, even though we're saying down, two, three, movement, the dog's gonna respond when you say down. And then you don't have to say two, three anymore. Of course, if you feel silly doing it, then. Sit. Free. Yeah, Down. Free. And let's do uh, one more and then that should be good for him. And then Leo's next. And down. Free. Very good. And then you can release them, praise them. Nice and job. Free. One. Good boy. In the beginning you were pairing and then you were having too much of a space. So we want to find the happy medium. 
And are you using terminal or continuation marker? Right now it's uh, continuation. Okay. Hello. Good adjustment. Um, again. And so we know if we're doing continuation, we have to be ready to fix if the dog makes a mistake, which Leo did very nicely on that last one. Chiv, Ken. Good, so right there he used the leash to help him out instead of the lure. I, di I didn't make it. He, he, as soon as I almost did it, he, uh, he helped himself. Uh. Good, nice job on the timing. Um. So did you recommand sit? No, I just said his name. Oh, and he, and he laid down again. Offered something. Amud. Ken. Um, Shkav. Ken. Um. Lo. Shiv. Watch his little. Ken. There you go. Shkav. Ken. Shiv, Ken. Very nice. Um, Amod. Amod. Kopshi. Okay, that's tough. Shiv, Ken. Lo. And low is your marker for negative reinforcement. Cool. Shkav. And again, okay. reminder for those watching at home, negative reinforcement is when we turn pressure on, when they comply, we turn it off. Negative reinforcement is not a punishment. Shiv. Ken. Amod. Khopshi. Shkav, Ken. I mean, looking really nice, so however many more you want to do, and then you can end the session. Because mostly my concern is making sure you guys are doing it right, so, I mean, you're pretty much doing everything correct. Shkav, Ken. His sitting down are both yeah, looking yeah, really I nice. Yeah, yeah, because I haven't done one even repetition of, of stand. It's the first time I ever introduced it to him. Um, Amod? But your timing looks really nice. Did you use the terminal there, or was that the no? Key? I used continuation and then terminal. I mean, he didn't he didn't move, so it was fine. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm trying to build his understanding. Because he understands. But my problem, my main problem, is that he if I wait too long, he starts to offer new new things. So I'm I'm working on patience yeah. right now. And that's very normal when we do some of that proactive training. And that's all what really opera kind of conditioning stuff. is. Because we all remember what opera conditioning means, right? A dog that understands that their behavior has an effect on their environment. Oh, yeah. So our dogs go. Hmm, I I look at you, I get treats. I lay down, I get treats. I stand, I get treats. So I'm waiting, nothing's happening. Maybe I'm gonna offer of a behavior to get a treat. Oh yeah. And this is why dogs don't beg. You have a client that goes, my dog's begging. And then you have okay. to ask them, have you ever given your dog a piece of food for looking at you? Yes. Well then how does your dog know the difference? Mm -hmm. If you have a plate of food, your dog goes, this is the deal. You got food, I look at you, you give me food, <laughs> right? And then we go, stop begging. The dog goes, I don't understand you. <laughs> I'm done. Well, yeah, well. You're doing the casino one, right? All done. <laughs> All right, nice. Do you have any questions? Uh, not really. It looks good. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Looks very nice. Excellent work. I, uh, I stopped giving the commands like a couple of weeks ago, and then I, um, I'm, in, I'm reintroducing them just because I didn't like the way that he... It was performing uh, it? Yeah, stand was almost stand like on, the, on his thigh, kind of, mm. and lay down was not always like straight. It was like lay down and it was lay down on the side. So now after I know, like I solidified the stand and the sit, now I know how to make it. I'm still working on the stand though because he stands crooked. Mm. So once I figure out the stand then completely, I'll Okay, so you're not gonna, you're gonna take away the command then for the stand until you finesse it a little bit more. I didn't even I just I just did it like two times just to it doesn't even have an effect you know two times doesn't really do much but and yeah, that's, I'm, uh, that's excellent we all know that's the way to do it right if you realize you progress too quickly you've jumped a step too early you just go back it's not a big deal if you start adding the command and you're like I don't like the way this looks go back a step that's always what I do I go back a step if needed so nice work thank you. Thank you again for watching. As always, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. Click that notification bell and tag me at Nate Shomer so I can see the progress that you're making at home with your dogs. Thanks again. We'll see you guys in the next one.